Hey guys, what's up? It's Glavian, just enjoying my morning coffee here, and I found this post this morning on Reddit, in r slash Final Fantasy XIV discussion, and it seems to be rather popular right now. And it's titled, A Realm Reborn's Content Has Been Fixed, Time for Gameplay. And I did go ahead and I skimmed it, but I haven't read it word by word yet, and I figured I'd do so on video. And so without further ado, the OP starts off by saying, we know the devs have done a tremendous job of improving A Realm Reborn. Redoing the end of 2.0 by reworking Castrum, Praetorium, Cape Westwind, King Mughalmog, and Steps of Faith. Plus all the changes they made on 5.3 with flying and removing filler slash fetch quests. That said, there is one more section of A Realm Reborn that I think needs some big changes. The very start of the game, specifically the actual gameplay. Now, I came into Final Fantasy XIV rather recently so i was able to play castrum praetorium and i think even cape westwood and king mugglemog with the 6.1 changes and i even made a video four or five months ago now on my channel titled if it wasn't for patch 6.1 i would have quit the game and what i said in that video essentially is while i was going through a realm reborn although i enjoyed the msq i did find the combat relatively slow and unengaging and in large part, that's because I have a lot of experience playing MMOs. I've been playing them since I was a nine-year-old or something with old school RuneScape, right? And I played World of Warcraft starting the age of 12. And I have an MMO mouse. And I'm better at tap targeting than any type of combat in any other type of game because I've played MMOs so much. And so given that that's the case, I did find the combat rather slow. And the game didn't put its best foot forward in terms of combat and in terms of, you know, uh, actual like gameplay mechanics. And so I had no idea, I had no sense of reference of what this sort of combat style, what these sorts of um, mechanics are capable of being and how engaging they're capable of being. And I didn't find that out until I went ahead and I did Castrum and I did Praetorium and I found myself having so much fun. And I had a lot more fun in Praetorium than I did up to in anything up to that point in the game. And so very early on in A Realm Reborn, you know, there was that carrot dangled in front of me, that carrot of, hey, if you keep playing, you know, this is what you could expect. If you keep playing, as you can see, the combat does get better. It does get fun. It does get more engaging. It does become more challenging. Go for it. And if these changes weren't made, I would have had to wait until like, Stormblood or maybe even Shadowbringers to even like conceive that the combat in this game could be engaging, could be fun, could be challenging because I didn't have a challenge up to that point. And so, you know, th this motivated me to keep going. And this motivated me to be like, okay, there is a story here, but there is also a game here. I just got to wait a little bit. And so then the OP goes on to say, he says, in my opinion, the beginning of a realm reborn suffers from two major issues. One, you can't start as every job. And two, most jobs have very few skills early on and don't get the crux of their toolkit until 60 or 70. There are 19 jobs in the game, but you can only start as 9 of them. I imagine some prospective players saw Reaper or Gunbreaker or Sage, got an account, and found out that they have hundreds of hours of gameplay in front of them before they can play a job that appeals to them. Okay, I'm going to stop reading right there. So... Okay, let me start with the second point he makes. He says, most jobs have very few skills early on and don't get the crux of their toolkit until 60 or 70, and it makes sense why this design, design decision was made. And the reason why it makes sense is because Final Fantasy XIV is a Japanese MMORPG. And the Japanese culture as a whole is used to gaming on consoles more than they are on PC. PC gaming was a lot more popular in the United States a lot earlier and a lot more popular in South Korea and other parts of the world more early than it was for Japan. And Japan has, you know, Sony comes out of Japan, Nintendo comes out of Japan. That's, you know, all of the Nintendo consoles and the PlayStation. And so for the longest time, for the longest time, this population has been primarily a console first audience and only more recently is pc gaming becoming bit by bit a little bit more mainstream in japan you know console still is you know the overarching platform that people play video games in in japan i mean that's true here in the united states but it's definitely more true in japan and so given that that's the case for a lot of people who are in japan 
who are playing Final Fantasy XIV are playing their first MMO ever. You know, some of them might have played FF11, but the vast majority, their first MMO is Final Fantasy XIV because they didn't play World of Warcraft. You know, they didn't play Lord of the Rings Online. They didn't play all of the MMOs I played as a 9-year-old, 10-year-old, 11-year-old, 12-year-old. So they're not used to tap targeting. They're not used to having 30 buttons. And so because it's so novel and because Japan is the target audience, is the core target audience for Final Fantasy XIV, you know, the West is kind of a secondary audience. It makes a lot of sense that they were kind of eased into the experience of tap targeting. They were eased into the experience. And it also explains why, you know, there's so much effort put it into making Final Fantasy XIV so cohesive and so playable on console to begin with. Because, you know, they know over at Square Enix that a lot of people are going to be playing this on PlayStation, you know, not PC. And so that explains why things were done the way they are. Now, does that mean that things should stay this way? I would argue probably not because, you know, PCs are becoming more mainstream in Japan. And a lot of people who have even played Final Fantasy XIV on PlayStation over there have been doing so for several years. So they've gotten used to the combat. So to go in and make these changes to Praetorium, to make these changes to Castrum, are have made sense. Now, when you're saying they need to move some of the toolkit earlier, this there's gives and takes there. There's pros and cons. If you move more of the toolkit earlier sure the gameplay becomes more engaging earlier on but you are creating a bigger barrier to entry for brand new mmo players you know and if you want to continuously make the game bigger and grow it and grow its core audience you're going to need to bring in people who've never played an mmo before who are not used to tap targeting and so adding more of the toolkit earlier on is going to you know make it good for people who are mmo vets such as myself who who's come from world of warcraft who already had an mmo mouse who knows what tap targeting is like, but you are going to hurt the ability and for new people to come in and you are going to raise the barrier to entry if you do that, right? And so the people who are over at r slash FF14 discussion are people who have probably been playing the game for a while. They're passionate about the game, hence why they're on a subreddit about the game, not even the main subreddit, you know, and who might have had like a lot of experience playing tap targeting games. And so I understand from that perspective why you would think it's a good idea to add more of the toolkit earlier on. But although that's going to appeal to the current audience more, it would make it harder for new people who have never done it before to get in the game. It is, you know, so I don't think it's the move. And if you've been playing for a while, you're probably past level 60 or 70 anyway. Now, he also says that you can't start as every job and that might be an issue. This too, I'm dubious about, and I have my skepticism about. And the reason why is because when you can't start as every job, this makes, you know, this gives players incentives and things to look forward to and to be excited about once they get to later levels. It's like any game. Imagine you start playing any game and they give you all the things and all the rewards up front then there's nothing to look forward to. And then the longevity of the game decreases, you know, and there is a sweet spot. You can't elongate and make the rewards so impossible and so hard to get that people will get demotivated to get them. And you can't give everything too early because if you give everything too early, then, you know, you get excited for a little while and then the excitement wears off. And so I don't think it's really that big of an issue that you can't start every single job right away. It's cool to look forward to playing Sage. It's cool to look forward to playing Dancer. It's cool to look forward to playing Reaper. It's cool. And it's not like you don't have choices up front, you know. The the nine that you start as, you know, help you get into the game. And, you know, they will get you a feel, especially if you're a new player. Okay, do I even like tanking? Do I even like healing? Because you could play White Mage right from the very get-go. Do I even like DPS? And you can get a feel for who you are as a player and go through that sense of self-discovery through the game to even know like what I want to play Reaper. And, and and if you end up liking DPS, that can make you even more excited. And so I don't necessarily think that's a problem that you don't get everything up front, especially for a brand new player. And again, it just goes to show that, you know, people who write posts like this are people who are veterans or people who are veterans of the game or who are veterans of the MMO genre as a whole. But, uh, you know, you have to think from the perspective of a brand new player 
a brand new player who probably doesn't have MMO experience because those are the people we need to generate longevity for the game and to, you know, increase its success. Because if we're continuously appealing to just the core audience, I'm not saying you should neglect the core audience, but like all these complaints that this, uh, or all these points that this OP here is bringing up is about the new player experience. And the new player experience is not going to be their experience. Anyway, I'm going to keep reading his post. So he goes on to say that I imagine some prospective players saw Reaper or Gunbreaker or Sage, got an account, and found out that they have hundreds of hours of gameplay in front of them before they can play a job that appeals to them. Of course, the main issues with allowing players to start as every job are there are no low-level job quests for most of them, and with Dark Knight, Astrologian, and Machinist, they start in Ishgard. So allowing people to start as those three would at least probably require some quest text getting altered, if not full-on retcons. And that's true. That's a, that's a point. You know, if you do make everything earlier, the the way that Final Fantasy decide, uh, or Square Enix designs Final Fantasy is the narrative is so interwoven with all of the other components of the game. And because it's so interwoven, it, it adds meaning and it, you know, add, adds a lot of enhancement. It adds saturation, you know, to the other components. So, for example, with the release of Dragon Song Reprise Ultimate, I was watching a Bellular video about this last night, about how with, you know, uh, spoiler alerts about that raid in 3, 2, 1, how, you know, when you're fighting King Thord and Archifont comes out and you have to save Archifont and then there's the time reversal and, you know, there's like a story being told throughout the raid. And uh, it's the same thing with these jobs, with Dark Knight, with Astrologian, with Machinist, there's a story being told about them. And to separate the story from the uh, the gameplay i don't think is the move for final fantasy 14 it adds so much depth when you do that when you when you maintain that relationship between story and gameplay and dark knight is so interwoven with heaven's word or, or dragoon is so interwoven with like what heaven's word is how would you get dragoon in a realm reborn and then go into heaven's word as a dragoon it doesn't make sense narratively well do we are we don't want this to be a game like world of warcraft where like the narrative just doesn't make any sense right and so then he goes on to say that, that said, I do think most new jobs could undertake existing class quests. Samurai could do gladiator quests. Red Mage could do Thermaturge. Sage could do Arcanist quests. Gunbreaker could do Lancer. No, I don't agree. Because the there, for example, like when you're a Thermaturge, the there is a narrative about the skills themselves, like the way you're using fire and how fire burns, and then there's ice and, you know, ice freezes. And, and it's so interwoven with the actual skills themselves, it wouldn't make sense to do this. It wouldn't make sense to do this. And it, again, it would create a situation more like World of Warcraft, where the narrative is so disconnected from the gameplay that it makes the narrative completely immersive and, you know, completely the shit show that it is now. And then he goes on to say the other issue that I think is far easier to fix is how long it takes for jobs to actually get their toolkits. I think 14 should handle this the way WoW does, where each job would get very weak, bare bones versions of skills earlier, but continuously gain traits that upgrade the skills or passives. This at least gives new players a bit of an idea of how to play while letting higher level players be less bored and synced content. Aha, okay, so, so, so here is where, you know, this post is coming from, this sentence right here, he says, this at least gives new players a bit of an idea of how to play while letting higher level players be less bored and synced content, so my homeboy, or homegirl here, is bored and synced content, and that's why they made this post, and you know what? I'll agree. Recently, I was leveling Sage and, you know, I was spamming roulettes and, you know, w without much breathing room, partially my fault for continuously like hitting the Q button. And also because I'm queuing as a healer, so I'm getting instant pops. So for days, I just did roulette after roulette after roulette after roulette. And if you do anything that repetitively for long enough, it's going to get boring, right? And yeah, like once your skill level gets higher, you have experience with the game, you have experience with the jobs and the gameplay content that is made for brand new players is going to feel slow for you and i like something that matt said from the bellular channel and he said that roulettes are kind of like going to your job you clock in you do your work you get your pay you get out and he's right he's absolutely right roulettes aren't made to be 
engaging content for veteran players. That's why Square Enix and Yoshi P have to tie in such a big reward for it, whether it's tombstones, whether it's the experience that you get from doing the roulettes or the end game currency. The reason why these exist is because you need an incentive to do them as a veteran player. Otherwise, you wouldn't do them because they're boring. And you need to have it that way because otherwise, new sprouts aren't going to be able to bring a party together. And although they are adding the ability to go ahead and do a lot of these duties in the MSQ with the AI, it's not the same experience as doing it with other people in terms of having the social experience. And some people want to have the social experience, so it's okay to once a day have an incentive to go ahead and do boring content for the sake of a reward. You don't want to design the whole game around that, like how World of Warcraft designs a whole game where it's all reward driven. But, you know, to spend 30 minutes optionally to like two hours optionally to go and farm some currencies to make the new Sprout experience in the MSQ better, then, then that's what you do, right? If you are board and synced content just do your roulettes and then go ahead and you can go ahead and do raids or now with the new criterion dungeons coming out in 6.3 or whatever content better fits your skill level so then op goes on to say the first example i can think of is paladin paladin is the magic tank but paladin doesn't get any offensive spells until the 70s that's so late for the magic tank to get magic why not repurpose old flash and make it low level holy spirit it could cost 5,000 mana so you can't spam it and has a put potency appropriate for the low skill levels or for black mage why not give fire 4 and blizzard 4 at low levels with reduced potencies they could make it so fire 4 can only be cast twice and blizzard 4 only gives one umbral heart or something like that well because that's probably overwhelming and even me even me coming from world of warcraft and having the experience that i have and switching to black mage uh, for the first time i did find a lot of it you know a lot to take in all at once you know the the, the gauge that I have and the way that you rotate between fire and the way you rotate between ice and all these sorts of things are brand new concepts and there are brand new paradigms even from someone who's used to tab targeting even someone who is from a game that has it these paradigms were new now albeit I did get carried <laughs> through leveling with uh, you know spamming dungeons with a blue mage and so I became like level 40 or 50 in just a couple hours and so granted that probably did make my uh, experience you know, a bit expedited and it did get me to have skills more quickly. And even then I was like, I was just very overwhelmed with all the stuff I was getting. It's like, what does this do? What does that do? Now eventually I got used to it. But, uh, and as a veteran, as a veteran, you know, that's how I felt. Now imagine a brand new player to the genre, you know, like, and that's the problem that you have with game design, your core audience to appeal to them, you have to do something different than to appeal to brand new players. If you appeal to your core audience, you don't get new players, it's not good for your longevity. If you only appeal to new players, then you're gonna piss off the veteran players who have been there for a while and they dip and that's not good for your game either. So to do both is a challenge. It's hard and I think they're doing a great job with it because there is content other than sing to roulettes that you can do as a veteran player that is open to you at any time. And you know, roulettes aren't something that you're forced to spam or even like forced to do at all. And so I think that the way it's designed now and the way that, you know, they don't make the very early A Realm Reborn rotations more sophisticated than they are, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. So I'm just going to skip this paragraph. He's talking about specifics about Paladin and about Black Mage. And then he ends off with the TLDR saying A Realm Reborn's actual gameplay is boring and this could be improved upon by letting people start as any job gain most of their kits earlier and letting people preview how jobs work at higher levels now that let last part i would agree with letting people preview how jobs work at higher levels i don't think there's anything wrong with you know even showing brand new players here's what your game would look like if you had a fuller kit now the thing is i do think we already have that and it's called the palace of the dead and if you want to see if you're like going through the msq and you're level 17 or 18 or 20, and you wonder what it's like to have a more full kit, you know, you can go through Palace of the Dead and very quickly get to level 50 and see what it's like. And then, of course, you have the same thing with Heaven on High, right? And by then, your kit's pretty filled out. And so we do already have that. 
you know, and I do think that's a good thing to have for those people who maybe aren't as new to MMOs who want to see what this particular MMO is like. You've got that going on for you. It's already right there. And uh, yeah, that's the, basically all I had to say for this video. I didn't know what to expect as I'm just reading this for the first time on video here. Essentially, this guy, although I think his ideas would make sense and, you know, come from a place that would make sense for a veteran player, aren't the best things for a new player. And, you know, you want to appeal to both. And I think Square Enix, the way that they're doing it, is already good. Could it be improved upon? Sure. But I think these changes necessarily would just make a higher barrier to entry for Sprouts. And that's all I had to say for this video. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.